Alright, this is a Optiplex 745 motherboard. It's very similar to the um, uh, GX620, Optiplex GX620. This is a um, 755 socket motherboard. It's for the small form factor um, Dells. It, um, this board has bad capacitors on it. These are actually good quality capacitors. Um, there are some revisions of these out. I'm not so sure about the 745s, but I know in the 620s, some of them had, um, you know, known bad uh, capacitor brands that would bulge and explode. Um, these are good quality, but there is a flaw on these motherboards, or I call it a flaw. It's not a very good design. So you've got the heat sink that sits just like this on the motherboard. No. Sorry. Just like this on the motherboard. And you have the hard drive that sits right here. So these capacitors here are getting, the fan is right here, so they're getting hot air on them. Plus, if the hard drive is running hot, they've got the heat coming off the hard drive. And these things just get cooked, especially with something like uh, Pentium D. This is a Pentium D processor and they run extremely hot. So, the this is actually the only 745 that I have as an example, but I've got several GX620s I've run across and if they if they if it's one of the boards that has the good capacitors good brand then it has a lot better chance of surviving um, if it has good capacitors and like a um, Pentium hyper threading processor not a Pentium D uh, if it's combined with a Pentium hyper threading most of those that I run across, the boards are fine. It's when you run across the um, ones that have the Pentium Ds, which are more prone to have failures. Now, even the uh, Pentium 4 hyper-threading machines that have the back capacitors, those capacitors will fail. But from what I've seen, the ones that have the good capacitors and the Pentium 4 hyper-threading, you know, normally the capacitors survive longer just because there's not as much heat. And it also may have something to do with, um, you know, the hard drive too, because if it's got a hard drive that's running hotter, then that can be a problem. Now, um, we've got three, let's see, three capacitors, I'm sorry, four capacitors that we're going to replace. And then I'm going to go ahead and replace this, uh, I think this one's 1800 microfarad. Yeah, this is an 1800 microfarad 6.3 volt capacitor. These are 2200 microfarad 6.3 volt capacitors. So we replace these four and this one. Um, and then I bought the 1800 6.3 volts and the 2200 6.3 volts off of eBay. I got a better price than I could have through Mauser uh, once you figure in chip shipping. And I got it from a seller named NY-Electronic-Parts-OS. And um, it was a good seller and got a good deal on these. I think I got them in like two or three days. So really quick shipping. Anyway, so the first thing we've got to do is pull these capacitors out. And I'm going to go ahead and take a marker just in case and mark the board on the negative side, uh, which is the side that has a little stripe on the uh, capacitor, just in case the board's not marked. Oops. So we got a marker, I just put a little line. Most motherboards are marked, but some aren't. And 
sometimes they're marked on the back side too with a positive and negative. This one doesn't have the positive and negative on it. So we've just got to find where they are on the back side. There's one of them, so we'll start right here. We've got our D soldering iron. And then we've got, we got that one, and we've got, trying to line them all up. And this one. Let's see if we can get all these. This is one right here. Now, the other thing I do once I get some of the solder removed is I will um, take my soldering iron and I will heat the lead or the capacitor while gently pushing to the side on the capacitor so that it will pull this lead out once the solder is hot. So we'll take that. And I just turned my soldering iron on, so it may not be hot yet. And give it a minute to heat up. Anyway, so this this machine will um, end up being my media center machine for um, my bedroom, and. I will end up replacing this Pentium D processor. I've got a Core 2 Duo 1.8 GHz. It should run much cooler than this one. This is a Pentium D. It's Pentium D 2.8. So fairly hot processor. Hot running. So this processor will come out and I'll use something out I'll use the Core 2 Duo in here which will run much cooler. Alright, I think we're hot now. So we are putting pressure on the capacitor. And then see it moved in. And then we'll go to the other side and we'll push the other way. Put some heat on it. And then we'll go the other way. It's out. Now let's go to the next one. out. That one's out. This capacitor here is the 1800. It looks good, but in these boards that I've seen, that one normally fails. So I figure it's probably close to failing. Might as well replace it. 
and these four normally fail. Only two looked bad on this one, but I might as well do all of them. Okay. Alright, so we got five capacitors out. And those little spots on the board are nothing. There we go.